Hey guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. This is going to be a fun video. We're going to continue our series on improvised field comms. I'm out here in the Tonto National Forest with my wife and the pup. So what we're going to do today in terms of our mission objective is we're going to take our HT and hopefully improvise another antenna that will give us more performance over this rubber duck antenna. Now to do that, we're gonna be experimenting with a variation of something called the jungle antenna. I don't have more than a day or two experience with this antenna, but long story short, it's technically a uh, quarter wave ground plane antenna, and we'll talk about what that is in a second. Now to make this happen, I basically need to have two stations. I have a J-pole antenna, which is technically part of our receive station, and the role of this guy is to be able to capture the audio on this radio so that we can uh, figure out uh, how well we're doing. And I'm gonna use a repeater that is about 17 miles from our location. Now there are gonna be a few things we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at four different power levels. The Yaesu VX6R has uh, the ability to do 300 milliwatts, one watt, 2.5 watts, and five watts. Then we're gonna do three antenna tests. We're gonna test all four of those power levels with the rubber duck see if we can even get into the repeater, capture the audio. And then I built uh, my first pass this morning of the uh, quarter wave ground plane. Again, it's been heavily modified from the traditional jungle antenna. And we're gonna run those same experiments on those four power levels. All right, folks, first test is gonna be with the uh, rubber duck here. We're at 300 milliwatts. Again, the repeater I'm trying to hit is 17 miles plus away. So let's see if it even opens up for us. KT7RUN, radio test, 300 milliwatts. Okay, so nothing. We didn't even open up the repeater. We're gonna go ahead and increase power to one watt. KT7RUN, radio test, one watt. Nothing, wow, okay. Third power level, two and a half watts. KT7RUN, radio test, uh, 2.5 watts. Wow, all right. Let's do uh, five watts. High power. KT7 RUN, five watts radio test, and no go. So clearly we can't get into the repeater with uh, five watts at this distance with the rubber duck. That's kind of what I wanted to know. So let's see how the um, quarter wave uh, ground plane works for us. All right, folks, before we get going and we test the quarter wave ground plane, my version of the jungle antenna, let's go ahead and talk about my experience and background because I don't want you guys to freak out when I tell you that I have almost no experience with this antenna. This is the first time I've built it. I am not prior service, but I did find it in uh, a US uh, military field manual. And uh, I've only been on the air for three years in, as an amateur radio operator. So take everything I say here with a grain of salt. And my variation of this technique is based on the gear that I bring out. So since we started the episode last week where we had a small repair kit, we want to build on that kit for this exercise. So we're going to be using the same uh, Cobra Head BNC connector. This is the male version. This time we're going to use the piece we did not use last time, and that is a female to female connector. And then we're going to use a little bit of RG316. Now this is higher loss than the RGAX I use at home. But given the run, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, I also carry longer lengths with me when I do HF. So all we're going to do is connect this up here. And then the other end will be connected to our radio uh, using BNC. Now we've got the two binding posts. The red will be hot. And to that, we're going to go ahead and connect a 19 inch. Actually, it's a lot shorter uh, after I measured the SWR. Uh, for me, I actually found that it's 17 inches and a half, 17.5 inches, but we'll talk about that in the after action report. And then the other variation I'm doing uh, that's unlike the uh, one you'll find in the military manual is that I'm actually only using two radials. I have one element that will be connected up to, actually, let's go ahead and do this in real time. So I'll talk about the construction when we get back to the shack, but at the highest level, I use larger gauge wire than I think I will ever use, uh, but it's partly because I had these ring terminals uh, and I could only use the larger gauge wire. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect this 17 and a half inch segment. I put, uh, this is one quarter inch uh, ring terminal, and we're gonna put it right over the hot end. So this will be the piece that's actually radiating. And we're gonna go ahead and connect this up. Now I'm using the cheap, I'm using the cheap Chinese uh, Cobra head. And the reason for it is I bought a really nice one from uh, Pomona 
electronics and theirs actually is captive and I can't remove the uh, thread caps there so I can't put over the ring terminals. So anyways, this will be uh, connected up to uh, some cordage from this small Palo Verde and this will be the radiating, radiating element. Now I've created two more of exactly the same uh, lengths and we're gonna use these for the radials. Now I'm only using two. The uh, military handbook actually shows three so you actually make a pyramid and I'll tell you why I did not do that. I actually found that it is easier not to build a uh, triangular structure with three twigs and figure out how to do lashing knots. And I'm actually gonna use the gear that I carry. I do a lot of work with, um... hold on, don't wanna choke or anything. Give me a second. Okay, so we're gonna put on our um, two radiating, or our two uh, radials here. And I'm actually gonna put these at this angle you'll see why in a second okay so we're essentially going to run this from the top of the tree with some cordage and then these two radials are going to come down at 45 degree angles and at the end i have a insulator i'm using an s-clip carabiner now the military manual has the third one that comes out and you actually need to improvise with three like two and a half foot um you know, uh, branches, a structure, and tie it off. Well, since I carry trekking poles, and I also carry guy equipment so that I can establish a lean-to shelter with my poncho, two poles, and then the, the guy line, I also use those guy lines for sometimes my antennas. So we're gonna reuse that equipment that I personally carry 100% of the time to be able to put this antenna. But at the end of the day, this is what we're looking at to see if we can actually make the contact work. All right, so let's go ahead and deploy this up. So the way we want this to work is we want to have our radiating element, the hot side, going vertical, and then we're gonna connect some cordage with an overhand knot um, over a low tree branch. Now these trees are pretty low, but this is all I have to work with, and uh, we'll see if it'll be enough. And then we have our two radiating elements down at the bottom, and it's actually kind of nice that this is a 90 degree uh, elbow, so the feed line will come straight down. So we're gonna take our overhand knot or a granny knot and just slip it over this carabiner. And again, we're probably only gonna go up about seven feet here. And then we're gonna tie this off. All right, that looks pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is stake out two guy lines. And again, I'm gonna use the guy equipment that I have for my shelter system and uh, antenna guy, guy lines. And I actually have two of them. It's very simple. Again, this is always with me. It's in my uh, dry bag with my poncho. So at one end, I have just a simple aluminum uh, camping stake with some cordage. And then you'll notice I'm a huge fan of S-clip carabiners. And then I have an overhand knot on one side to connect the carabiner. And then I always use something called a taut line hitch because you can change the length of pull. So for this particular one, we wanna be able to uh, give ourselves enough ability to uh, cinch it down. And again, another S-clip carabiner. So all we're gonna do is clip it to the other side or one of these sides here. And I'm gonna run this out and stake it to the ground. All right, so now we've got the other side. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We'll clip the carabiner and then I'm gonna go off and stake it down. Like I said, the cool thing here is we can go ahead and take our taut line hitch and we could apply a little bit of tension there and you notice that it doesn't actually come back on itself. And then we'll do the same thing with the other side. All right, well that looks pretty good. Sorry guys, it's really difficult to film this way. Uh, my wife is actually reading a book and she's got the other camera ready to go. So like I said, all we need to do now is connect this one up to my HT. And I'm gonna get the other one rolling. And uh, first thing I wanna do actually, make sure that I start out with, with low power before I start recording. So it looks pretty good, except for this stupid branch keeps hitting me. KT7 RUN, 300 milliwatts, just testing. And it doesn't look like we got into the repeater. Let's go to one watt. KT7 RUN, testing one watt. Also nothing. Okay, 2.5 watts.
So we got into the repeater. I don't know what it sounded like. Let's go to five watts. This is KC7 RUN. Last test, five watts with a improvised quarter wave ground plane antenna out in the field. So guys, there you have it. Um, I wasn't expecting to find anybody on the air. So we'll see if the audio came back. Well, let me see. I think you guys were doubling up. Uh, Leonard, I think our search is called. This is Gaston. I'm testing a field antenna. I, I could sort of understand you that time. Um, I had to turn my radio up a little, so I didn't get everything you said. But you're certainly more above the, the noise now. AC70W. Thanks for coming back to me. I'm testing out a uh, quarter wave ground plane out here on the Tonto that I hand built just to see if I could improvise something in the field and the rubber duck wasn't doing it, but uh, this uh, ground plane antenna is doing the trick, sort of. All right, guys, so there you have it. Uh, basically, it did allow us to make the contact, not full communication grade, but uh, he's able to copy. We'll see what the audio sounds like over uh, on the received audio from, from my station. But anyways, he's right. This should be a little bit higher. I probably should have better, done a better job today. Um, kind of screwed up this video, but you kind of get the point. I think for today, we're not going to go ahead and do the full... Um, field build. Maybe we'll just do it in the house tabletop a lot easier and uh, we can see how we do, take some measurements and talk about how this exercise went. Hey, good morning guys. It's a few days later. I've only got 20 minutes before I have to start work, but we're going to do another experiment uh, similar to what we did last time. We're going to be about a mile and a half closer than we were in the field, but for this exercise, the guys on Buy Me A Coffee who got early access to the first half of that video asked me to go ahead and try to improvise the third uh, not improvised because technically I built this at the house, but uh, add the third radial to it. I'm up as high as I can go out here. We're up at about 12 feet or so, and we're going to do 5 watts on the VX6R. We'll try the rubber duck next so we can get at least an apples to apples comparison. So I probably won't be running it this way. We'll talk about it in the after action report. KT7 RUN rubber duck 5 watts. And we don't even make it into the repeater. Let's go check out the audio. Well guys, I popped into the shack and the audio was actually very good. Full communication grade 5 watts. 20 miles with the jungle antenna. Again, this is not a fair apples to apples comparison because I have radically changed the design. I'm on the fence of whether I'm gonna go with the traditional jungle antenna that I just deployed and my other configuration. Let's talk about it in the after action report, but let's take a look at the SWR. I tuned it uh, in the house or earlier today over the dining room table and we're pretty much there. I know I shouldn't be holding the uh, analyzer, but we're at 1.16 to one on 147.200, so that is freaking fantastic. So a little bit better, uh, not, not by much, compared to the tuning I did. So we'll take another look at this guy. In fact, if you give me a second, I'll bring it down and we can take a look at the actual MacGyvered setup. All right, let's bring her down. So like I said, we were up about 12 feet. Uh, everything out here wants to snag, pinch, and bite you, but let's get a closer look here. A couple things. I'll talk about uh, how I improvise some bungee cord here. Uh, I actually like the technique I used for the lashing, but I have two, two and a, or three, two and a half foot uh, stakes. And I'll talk about these little overhand knots I put to make the guy line easier. Uh, there's a little bit more weight than I would like, but it is keeping this at pretty decent angles. So I may go to thinner pieces, but again, I scavenged what I had. And uh, I'm actually surprised that the crimps are actually holding here. So for the improvised one, we're going to do where we don't use um, ring terminals. We'll see how that performs, but all the weight is being suspended by 
the radiating element. So, like I said, we're going to do a full after action report. There is a lot to talk about, but bottom line, guys, uh, the goal is to improvise based on your area, your environment. My environment is very different than yours, and also based on the uh, materials and tools you have. So for me, this is the best I can do in the desert is about 12 feet up. Not going to do any higher because it does not represent my reality. We'll pop in the shack. We're going to talk about all the things. Morning guys, it's the following day. One more test. I've decided to uh, change and go back to my original improvised design with just two radials. Uh, this is not going to come on camera very well, but I'm just using one stick uh, instead of three to see if it'll give us more of a uh, rapid field expedient deployment. Let's check it out. Got in. All right, folks, welcome to the After Action Report. I'm gonna do my best to keep this short, but I learned so much and I wanna share everything with you. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, there is one thing I wanna tell you, and it is that you can build these antennas using very simple components and not requiring a whole lot of skill. I have absolutely no skill when it comes to this stuff. I'm a big dumb gorilla when it comes to radios and antennas and all of this nonsense. Uh, and if I can do it, you can do it, trust me. I'm not that smart. So. Bottom line is the jungle antenna that we deployed out in the field was very much influenced by my operating environment and a lot of my requirements. And I will tell you in terms of just boiling down, was this successful? Yeah. The difference between running my HTN 5 watts with a rubber duck and switching it out uh, with a variation of the jungle antenna was the difference between not making a contact and making a contact. That's it. All right, so let's talk about why I chose the jungle antenna. Well, I found it in a couple of different books. First was a special forces uh, military manual. And then recently someone suggested I get the gorilla's guide to the Baofeng radio. And there was a one pager on this antenna. I also happened to be at a local bookstore a couple weekends back. And this is simple and fun antennas. And literally the first antenna, while it was not a jungle antenna, was the quarter wave ground plane antenna, dead simple to do. In fact, my build is even easier since I actually don't do any soldering and my antenna can actually be repaired in the field pretty easily. So when I saw that antenna, I read about some of its characteristics. One, being field expedient. Uh, two, being able to increase your uh, transmit capabilities by giving you an additional two to three dB of gain, which translates to basically effectively doubling your power. So in the case of that first exercise I did when we were trying to transmit with five watts with a rubber duck, if we take a look at 3 dB being a doubling of power, you could think of that antenna swap as effectively turning this into a 10 watt radio. So the that antenna design appealed to me for all of those reasons. I also thought about how I can make it my own. I think this is the most important thing. Uh, what characteristics are important to you. So for me, it's to be able to deploy this quickly, use materials I have on hand, have it be lightweight and simple. So my version, the final version, effectively looks like this. And it actually builds on the Cobra head or the dual post BNC we covered in our last video, the first one. So we already have this in a repair kit. We're using this piece, which is the female to female BNC, which allows us to couple this side to uh, our length of coax. And then we have, uh, in my case, I only went with three elements, one radiating element and two radials, but I also did experiment with the classical design, which includes um, another radial, three at the bottom. So the classical design for this effectively requires that you take three supports, so basically three branches, you put them in a triangular configuration, you use whatever cordage you have to latch them together. And then you take a quarter wave element on all the sides. So you have a pyramid, attach it to the black side of your Cobra head, and then attach another equal length element uh, for the, the vertical piece. And now you have your quarter wave jungle antenna and just bring it up as high as you can. So my variation was very much dictated around uh, being field expedient we started out the exercise by using my guy system, 
because I do carry that for my shelter supports. And it worked okay. We actually were able to make that contact. I got some reports that there was a bit of noise there, but that was expected because we actually had three peaks in the way and we were going over 22 miles. I was basically in a small valley, but it worked, right? It worked, that's the trick here. Uh, the other two experiments were interesting. While they're not apples to apples because I did move to my backyard and was about a mile and a half closer, I still had a couple of those barriers in between us, but my ultimate favorite design is not the triangular structure. And the reason for that is just too much work to lash them together to find more materials. I found that performance wise, and this is all I care about, what did my audio so sound like on the receiving end with two and three radials, I could not tell the difference. So in my case, I basically just took a two and a half foot uh, fallen piece of wood. Uh, this was actually too thick. In the future, I'm actually gonna go with something that's a little bit smaller. Um, it's just less tension on the overall antenna system. And just put a little bit of cordage on each end with an overhand knot, and then use the S-clip carabiner here to click, clip it on and then attach this to our Cobra head, right? And then do the same with the other radial and then attach one for the radiating element. So my design is probably moving forward going to consist of a single stick, two small pieces of cordage, and then some longer cordage, which I have already to throw up and over. Now, the other requirement, and this came out of uh, the guys from Buy Me a Coffee, the members, I sent them the first 10 minutes of this video and I asked for their feedback and they basically had two resounding comments was throw that bad boy higher and add that third radial and I took their advice and while I came to the, back to the house I was able to go from 7 feet to 12 feet worked out great I tried out the pyramid configuration audio sounded good decided to take it down try it with just the two radials it sounded just as good to me you guys be the judge and let me know. So I thank them for giving me that advice. And um, what I found is what works for me won't work for everybody. So my trees out here are very low to the ground. So my operated environment dictates that 12 feet in general is the highest I can do. So I've geared up my equipment for that. And um, one thing that is nice though, I will tell you about the third or the triangle in the classical example, is that I noticed that it gives a lot more balance, there's actually less movement of the antenna, but like I said, in overall performance, I could not tell. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about my particular design. So with the ground wave uh, or quarter wave ground plane antenna, you need to realize that it's going to be a, each element will be a quarter wavelength of the frequency you want to work. I want to work 147 decimal uh, 250. So there's a formula that I had to put in to figure this out. And what I realized is that the formula is actually incorrect in my testing. So the classical formula for quarter wave element is 234 divided by your frequency that you want to work. Mine was 147 decimal 250 and then multiply by 12 to get it in inches. And I was getting like 19 and a quarter inches or forget what it was and it was too long. The antenna was actually resonating uh, lower than the frequency I wanted to work. And there was another gentleman, I think it goes by comms prepper, just discovered him, and he actually found the same thing, and he used 210 as his magic number, plugged that in, and I actually ended up at 17.1 inches, which gave me a perfect SWR. I was like at 1.2 to one. So, uh, like I said, just a little bit of math involved, and that's why I actually create these doping cards for myself where I put the frequency, the length, and then some notes, and then the formula just in case I need to calculate something else. And the members on Buy Me A Coffee, I'm gonna send you guys a PDF copy with the template and my actual finalized version for these three frequencies. So that's one of the perks for you guys. So doping card is gonna be part of my kit. In terms of measuring that length out in the field, I actually found that carrying with me a very small Taylor's measuring tape is absolutely perfect. And I know you can't always have this when you're doing field expedient operations. And that's why I told you guys in the last video, figure out a known quantity or known way to measure something. So for me, from the bottom of my elbow 
to the tip of my middle or yeah, middle finger, yeah, middle finger, not flipping you guys off, is uh, about 19 inches. And I actually found that when I cut these, I want to cut them for about 20 inches. And the reason for it is so I have enough room to have a little bit extra on the end so that I can make different adjustments. But in general, the length from this insulating piece here to the end here, for me, 17.1 inches worked great for 147 decimal uh, 250. So let's talk a little bit about this. Hopefully the math isn't freaking you out, but I did the same thing with all of the different elements. Uh, I have been told that the ground radials should be like 5% longer. I didn't deal with that. I didn't notice a huge issue in performance, so I'm not gonna mess with it. I'd rather have everything be exactly the same. So my version, I went ahead and uh, discovered what was the appropriate ring terminals to use. If you're in the field and don't have ring terminals, what you can do, and the primary reason why I love this BN Tech Go uh, 20 gauge uh, stranded wire is that you can literally take it, take your thumb and forefinger and strip it off. You're not losing any of the material whatsoever. So in the field, there is absolutely no need for you to have the ring terminal. Now the ring terminals, I found that these are actually pretty cool. Um, I'll put these down below too. They actually have heat shrink material so that you can hit it either with a uh, lighter or your heat gun and it gives it much better, more secure uh, fit and finish. Now this will cover 22 to 16 gauge. The inner diameter on these ring terminals are a quarter inch, which is the perfect size to actually thread over these cobra heads. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it before, I went with a nicer, fancier Cobra head from uh, Pomona Electronics, and they're not a good application for this because they're captive. So in this particular situation, the $25 fancy one actually did me less value. The $4 Chinese one I'm going to be using because it gives me the ability to put on the terminal rings. So one other thing that I found, tools are important. I have never owned a pair of crimpers for spade connectors or ring terminals. And this pair for, I think it was like 45 bucks or something with the wire cutter with five different dies was a game changer. This thing actually is self-ratcheting. Hear those clicks? And gives you a perfect crimp every time. So I was using one of the ones where you had to like manually hulk it and I am very happy with this new tool in my collection. Now on the other end, uh, what I've done is, George from Pactana many years ago sent me a bucket of these S-clip carabiners and they've got these little rings and they're also insulated because it's plastic on both sides, so great for the insulator. You can take this wire and stop at like, in my case, the 17.1 inch mark, loop it through, loop it back on itself and put a little bit of electrical tape and now what we have is the ability to have an antenna that has band agility with an overall length of wire that I have allowed myself of 20 inches. I can actually adjust this down anywhere from 144 megahertz all the way up to 148 megahertz. And then this is where the power of my dope card comes in. I can see, okay, I want to work 144390. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tie that back on itself so my length is 17.45 inches. All right, now I'm gonna work simplex on 146520. I need to adjust the length to 17.2 inches. So hopefully that all makes sense on what I've done here for the overall construction. And like I said, all four of mine are the exact same length so that I don't have to remember which one is the radiating element versus the radials. All right, guys, it's finally quitting time. Can do the close. This is going to be 30 seconds. Just a big shout out to all of you, but the Buy Me A Coffee supporters and the members in particular, you guys are amazing. Thank you for all your feedback and making me be able to put this video together. Uh, I know there was a lot of information here, but don't get discouraged. Like I said, these are very simple antenna builds, uh, very cost effective. In fact, if you get together with your, like, your mutual assistance group, or your hand club, whatever, you can get together, buy 250 foot of uh, the wire, a bucket of these connectors, figure out how to get bulk pricing on the S-clip carabiners and these guys, and you have a ton of antennas for not a lot of money. One other thing I will tell you is that I plan to make another version 
for uh, the 70 centimeter band and for GMRS. I'm going to get my GMRS license finally. I've got a couple of radios and this is going to be my go-to antenna. It's going to be my modified version of the jungle antenna. So anyways guys, be strong, be safe, and be prepared.